Hey, if you're watching this, fucking trade with Osprey so he can get a mystery vis- Hello everyone, welcome back to Player Guides. I am Osprey. I'm Cameron. And I'm Hannah. I'm and on the sticks today. Oh. oh, go ahead. Uh, playing some more Brilliant Diamond. We just caught, um... A Gibble! <laughs> yes! Guppy's on the team, and Guppy's so happy to be here. Oh, Guppy's level 43. That means um, uh, we're gonna get some evolutions soon if we if we do a little bit of fighting with it. Can we heal the poison? Or uh... I, I have to go back up for that. Okay. So real quick, what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just kind of glancing at what each of these hideaways are. That makes sense. Oh, interesting. We're not taking damage as we're walking. Yep. Uh, is, is that a am thing I misremembering? that happens usually? Uh, that they changed that part way through. Uh, okay. Like between generations. It used um, to be that yeah, Hannah, that like status effects that hurt you would hurt you while you walked, would hurt your Pokemon while you walked. Oh. So there's interesting. a there's a terrifying thing that happens in Nuzlocke's where people get to Viridian Forest and then their Pokemon gets poisoned and if they don't have an antidote they have to strategically plan oh. a race to the Pokemon Center to try and save oh, their Pokemon my God. before it faints and it's incredible to watch sometimes. Ooh, Tentacruel just hanging out in the water. Yep, actually. Yeah, Squidward. Um, <laughs> that's all I think of when I see Tentacruel. <laughs> Can we? Hey, fight us! Do you finish oh, those errands? Hmm? Nothing. <laughs> Hannah's just quoting SpongeBob. I never got into SpongeBob. That uh, was... I never first, did. First seasons one through four pretty much are the best seasons, and then the um, original SpongeBob creator. And I don't know the whole life story, but essentially, um, the original creator of Sponge or creative director, I should say, of SpongeBob, Derek Dryman left the show and you can just you can tell when when he leaves because the ep I feel the episodes just suck after that so it's really only seasons like one through three one through four that are that I find genuinely Ooh, funny dusk stone that's for um Honchcrow can get it and who else uses dusk stone Mischievous. Mischievous. Hey, if you're watching this, fucking trade with Osprey so he can get a Mischievous because yeah. Game Freak fucking hasn't implemented... I, I assume they still haven't implemented Pokemon Home yet, right? Not that I've seen, but I also haven't looked for a little bit. I've been playing Legends Arceus where I can catch every Pokemon. That's true. <laughs> I guess uh, Legends, Legends Arceus does feel like it came out and it instantly obsoleted um, at least Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl. Maybe not Sword yeah. and Shield, because Sword and Shield still has, like, the competitive multiplayer aspect. Um, but yeah, Legends Arceus is definitely, uh, it's not, I, you're I need- You're kind of, Ooh. you're kind of, uh, in influencing me? Is that the word that I think that I want to use? Are you suggesting that you may play it in the future? I am suggesting that I might play it in the future. Okay, you heard it here, player guides. <laughs> Hannah, Legends Arceus. Look at this thing. <laughs> this is a Gen 1 Pokemon, by the way. Yeah. I I really like Lickitung's design. Um, oh. I don't like its evolved form, Lick Licky. I don't, I don't like that one. The Licky? Lick Lick? Yeah, yeah, blah, blah. It's a tongue twister. Um... <laughs> Uh, Editor Cameron, throw up your original her, uh, sprite for Lickathon from Gen 1. Oh yeah, here uh, here it is. <laughs> and if you're curious... Wait, is it the Fork Tongue? Was that the original sprite? Oh no. What? Oh no, that's Doctor's Lo Dr. Lava's Lost Pokemon on Twitter. Lickitung's Tongue Split. Oh my During god. During Gen 1's development, Lickitung had a tongue split in before it came out in the... Uh... That's interesting. 
That's that's super interesting. Back uh, when it was what Pokemon Red and Green or whatever it was called in Japan. I don't know. I never played a uh, Red and Green, the Japanese version. Yeah. But neat. Um. But yeah, like original Lickitung was just. You got a little a lot of that. What is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was also really rare. Yeah. It was, I remember I, spending a lot of time. <laughs> was it... I, I can't remember. Was it one of the Safari Zone only Pokemon? Or was it available on that route outside of Saffron City as well? I want to say it was Safari Zone. Yeah. Well, dang. Give I don't already like this cavern. You don't like this cavern? No. To, like, Mossy or what? I just don't like all the green... Um, oh my god, yeah. Um, I Fuck. went to... Uh, Ooh, Gibble. I went to... I was celebrating Ooh, my bestie's <laughs> birthday yesterday. Shout out to Polly. Yeah! Um, and we went to this uh, tea room called Remember When Tea Room. And it was super cute. A lot of fun. Uh, it was pretty far away, right? It was up in Waynesville. It's like 45 so, minutes? 45 minute drive from downtown Cincinnati. But Polly... And the other friends who live like out in the burbs, it's not that far. Can, um, can you set this when you get to Mason? If you're driving from Mason, um, it's probably like a 30 minute drive, give or take. Right, um, it's not. It was actually maybe a little less than What's that. What's the like when you say tea room? Is it like so a Japanese it's, tea room? No, 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 no. It's um, it's very much like a British high tea type deal. Ah. So it's in this um. A Victorian style home, probably built in the mid to late 1800s, 1900s. Um, and you go in, and um, it kind of reminds you I mean, everywhere you look, there's like little teapots and Victorian style um, teacups and whatnot that you can buy. Um, but you place a reservation ahead of time because you can choose what kind of um, tea quote-unquote uh, service, I guess she would like. So for Polly's birthday, we did what they call the ultimate tea. And it was, um, you got your selection of, of three different teas that they had brewed for the season, um, which one was, I call it a Paris tea. Which I couldn't tell you what was in it. One was a chocolate-covered strawberry tea, and then the other one was a brambleberry tea, which the brambleberry tea is pretty much what I drank in it and enjoyed. I like that one a lot. Um, and you get served. Oh, that's funny. Quick claw kind of fucked you. You start with a little, um, you started with a little mini cheese ball and crackers. And then you, once you finished that course, you got a, a tomato basil soup, which was pretty good. And then after that course, they brought out these little, um, these tiered trays which oh, with had the tea sandwiches? yeah they had different finger sandwiches and they had uh, scones and they had little um, little treats like little brownies and little mini cupcakes up top so it was a lot of fun the whole experience took about two hours um, I'd recommend it for like a cute little like something different if you're gonna do like a bridal shower or uh, mother's day type thing um but it was it was a lot of fun it was something different um waynesville is definitely like farm country mm -hmm. so what's the history of this like random tea house out in farm country do you know what I, i'd have to look it, it. you're fine if you I, I wondered if you like asked the owner or something no i don't see do that it, like you do does sound <laughs> you don't talk to the owners not really <laughs> um it, it it does sound neat. It's something that I'd like, like you said, maybe check out for a special occasion. Um, yeah, the I think my thing is I am a very traditional tea guy. All I need is black cardamom tea. And okay. I, I'm not a fan of scented So teas. it's called Remember When Tea. Remember One is a locally owned and family operated tea room. 
It opened in the fall of 2016, became a favorite gathering place for both locals and people from across the country, and it has been recognized by tmap.com as one of the best tea rooms in the country. The menu and atmosphere provide not just a meal, but a unique experience to be enjoyed by those young and young at heart. Remember when Tea Room is a perfect location for all of your formal celebrations, such as bridal showers, baby showers, birthdays, and anniversaries. It is also a great casual gathering place to meet family and friends. A good time and lots of laughter are encouraged. Neat. So Very cute. So the, this is something that's always kind of confused me. When people say young at heart, like, what's that even supposed to mean? It means old. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, swine up. Hey, little guy. The menu. Look at this little piggy. So the full menu. We should catch that one, too. <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I don't. The. There's definitely some ageism in there, but I'm not sure the source of it. Osprey. The, um. The ultimate tea menu, which is what again what we used or ate, was a beloved BLT cheese ball, red tomato basil soup, a Saint Valentine's strawberry salad, and the sandwiches were a chicken salad croissant, croissant. Cupid's cucumber tea sandwich, and a honey ham sandwich. The scone was a sweetheart scone with hey. ch chantilly. Chantilly this little cream. piggy's going to the market. Chantilly cream? Chantilly cream? Chantilly. Chantilly cream. Uh, and then desserts were a red velvet brownie, a moonstruck... Oh, I gotta think of a name. What about... I'm trying to think of fame. What about Babe? <laughs> no. Gordy! Who's Gordy? That's another little pig movie. Gordy? Yeah. What's that one about? It's about a pig on a farm... It's essentially a knock. Oh, G O R D Y. It's a. I think it's a knockoff of 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 babe. babe. Yeah. Gotcha. <clears throat> I'll look up that synopsis. Anyway, desserts were red velvet brownie, moonstruck marshmallow iced cupcake, and a cherry tr delight trifle. And then they have a different menu in March. That was February. I guess I, I maybe now I need to like put it in at the beginning of the video or something. This is not an advertisement. We haven't. Been oh, this paid. is not. <laughs> this was just something that I did yesterday uh, for a birthday for my one of my best friends. I know what you mean. I don't need that. <laughs> I need more coffee though. <laughs> oh, how has your you've been grinding your own beans? Yeah, and I will it. never go back. I love my grinder so much. Shout out to Cameron, if you got it for me as a lovely Christmas gift. Uh, I will never go back to pre-ground. Grounds. Yeah, to ground coffee. I love grinding my own my own beans for coffee, which I can I finished the bag that I had now, so I'm gonna have to get more beans, and I'm gonna try to find the beans. Uh, White Castle coffee because that's my favorite. Um, but they don't sell it in Kroger anymore, so I need to see if I can find it online. Is it so you, Hannah? Yes, we, sir. In in shopping and, and stuff in the past, yeah. We tend to try our best to be ethical consumers, which is oftentimes very difficult. I don't know enough about coffee, like, but from what I've read, is that like a concern of yours at all? Where your coffee comes from? It. This is going to make me sound like a horrible person. It hasn't been. It's not something that I've done a ton of research on. Um, I will say typically um, my ground coffee I would buy and, and still do occasionally before I got the grinder um, was from a local shop here called Coffee Emporium, which, oh, he's a evolving. Hey! People's um, evolving in a gubite. And Coffee Emporium is a woman-owned, which I find awesome, local business here in Cincinnati. And I know that they source their own coffee um, like ethically. Um, as far as White Castle's coffee, I... 
I couldn't tell you. Yeah, if, that's a kind of what sad they do. Pokedex entry. It's it's I guess it's a reference to like shark fin poaching. Hmm. I I don't have a lot of context on that to say. I'm gonna well, teach. Uh, oh yeah. I feel like bulldoze. Yeah. I'm kind of sad we didn't face the gym later, actually. What do you mean? This episode? Yeah. Why is that? I don't know. It feels like I just procrastinated the entire time instead of taking on the gym. Nah, we, we <laughs> caught some more Pokemon, which is important to do. Gibble evolved. In, I feel like getting Gibble to its evolution stat line is probably a big improvement in its survivability. We'll call we'll call this an episode, um, and we'll we'll come back and on the next one. Yeah, we'll go and we'll kick that gym's butt. We got two ground types. Um, I feel like we've got a grass type. We are well equipped to go dunk on those fools. Uh, thanks for playing with us, everyone. Yeah. See y'all next time. Thanks, everyone. Who day?